The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, has inspired me to present this report. This video report is called, is titled, White House Touts Phase 1 of China Trade Deal. This is historic. The world today, as the President said, we don't need Middle East oil. China needs our natural gas. China needs our LNG. China big imports market, big our market. coal for that. Larry, you said something. $50 billion. Yeah. $50 billion of energy exports. No, no, no small matter. You, a moment ago, you said you got 50% or about half of what you're looking for in phase one. Does that mean China got the other half? And was that, to borrow a phrase, the art of this deal for phase one? Well, I would say no. I, 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 I would put it that way. Uh, no, number one, if you look at the commentary coming out of the Chinese media organs, now they're saying, look, they didn't lose the deal. They needed the deal to improve their consumers. Their economy has been very soft. Our tariffs have hurt them enormously and other factors. They need it. They want the American goods and services to help the Chinese economy and the Chinese consumer. So in, this, in that issue of 40 to 50%, no, no, we didn't lose. We didn't complete. In other words, we got through probably, I'm just going to say, in ballpark numbers, uh, Bill, we got through about half of what we wanted, which is half more than anybody thought a year ago, and more, frankly, than anybody thought in phase one. That's a tremendous, again, this has never happened before. No trade agreement like this in history of U.S. sign of relations. What's left, let's call it the other half, just for argument's sake, round numbers, that is left to be dealt with in phase two. Mm -hmm. And we will get right at it. We will go right at it as soon as the agreement is signed today. Phase two okay. begins. Let's go real big picture now and talk about the U.S. Uh, deficit topping a trillion dollars. Okay, and the next video I'd like to present before I start uh, getting into the scriptures begins at 120 of this, a uh, minute and 20 seconds of this video. And this is... This video is entitled uh, Rep. Van Drew. Both articles of impeachment are very weak. To your question, look, the House had its time. They have spent months and months and months of reports, of investigations, uh, millions upon millions of dollars, and we finally, the House came up with two articles of impeachment, both of which are very weak. You know, I will say this, and I will say it over and over again, because I think people must understand how important it is. Impeachment is a tool that is not meant to be used anywhere near a regular basis. Our founding fathers almost disliked it. Okay, so I, don't, I don't mean to um, cut anyone off, but that's what I wanted to get across uh, regarding the deals that, that are being made, the deal with China. This is a historic deal. This is um, a deal, it, it's like a, a, a magician. It's a deal that a magician would make. And the important things, the elements that I wanted to bring out is that, and that the, the impeachment, once again, that's happening is, um, is a strategy, is a strategy that is being used. Okay, regarding this, um, what, what the present times we're living in in the in the political world this news is extremely important what is happening right now and the next election in, in 2020 is going to be huge and the bubble may very well burst in 2012 at the end of 2012 election we'll be able to see this happen before the actual election uh, meaning uh, the bubble burst is would be the political bubble uh, once again, if you in the last video you see how the ten toes of the statue of Nebuchadnezzar is also uh, showing us symbolically the Republican and Democratic Party. It's a political arena. Other nations use as well, where they keep the votes close, so that they have this internal uh, tug of war going on in order to polarize the people, to keep the people uh, at bay, to keep the people without civil uprisings. And the entire, when the bubble pops, what, what we have is a controlled demolition. And we have uh, the, um, the little horn. Uh, it, we have the, the rising of the phoenix 
in uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, where it, it's time. Okay, the bubble pops and uh, everything, all the towers fall, and it's just complete war and chaos, bloodshed, chaos. Uh, it is a offering. Uh, it is of the transcendency of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. The empire of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. The kingdom of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Uh, Lucifer taken its seat, the seat of the beast. So I want to begin here in Daniel 11:38. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces. This is the little horn. And a god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. In Daniel 11.38, uh, in my notes here, But in his estate he shall honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not, and shall he honor, uh, shall he honor with gold. Gold is oil, Holy Spirit, and wine. Equals the filling up, drunkenness thereof. Ephesians 5.8 And silver equals frankincense and with precious stones equals myrrh and pleasant things equals seasonings spices souls gifts now in the next verse so the little horn will honor his god through gaining all the wealth of the world including souls matthew 16 26 for what is a man profited profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The Magi were sent to bless the Christ child and his household, but Lucifer, Satan, the devils, attempted to use the blessings as a curse for the want of mammon and war of this world to destroy his lot, the lot of Jesus Christ, the lot of transcendency in the thereafter. And that was the lot that the Father had given to his Son. That Lucifer was trying to use that to curse the, the entire household of Jesus Christ, including Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew 2, 11 to 12, Matthew 2, 11 and 12, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. God provided physical and spiritual blessings for Joseph to bring Jesus Christ to Egypt to fulfill the scriptures. In Matthew 4, 8 to 10, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. The gifts from the magi slash magicians slash astrologers was used as a curse by Lucifer, Satan, the devil. And he once again attempted to put the curse into effect during the times of Matthew 4, 8 to 10. So, this is now, we're switching to the little horn. The little horn receives gold, frankincense, and myrrh from the curses of Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the seasonings as well. In Isaiah 23, 15 and 17, And it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre shall be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. After the end of seventy years shall Tyre sing as a harlot. Take a harp, go about the sea, thou harlot, thou hast been forgotten. Make sweet melody, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass after the end of seventy years 
that the Lord will visit Tyre, and she shall turn to her hire, and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth. The curse of selling one's soul and gaining the entire world is fully received by the little horn, fourth beast kingdom of shining brass. Within the seventy years, Tyre will be forgotten because the Holy Spirit is shed in all flesh, and Tyre rejected the call. Then, after 70 years, 2017 to 2018, and 2018 to 2019, the gold and frankincense and myrrh of the little horn rises up out from the four corners of the earth. And his works is that of a magician, Revelation 13, 11 to 18. He has the world singing as a harlot towards God, Daniel 11, 45. In Isaiah 23, 17, Tyre will spiritually and physically set its face, slash, turn to her higher. Three years, for three years. That equals amount of a period of three years. See Isaiah 16, 14. Also in Job 7, 1. The years of a hireling for Tyre is the last three hours of Jesus Christ on the cross, equals great tribulation for 666. Moab and all her multitude will go to her hire, captivity and perdition, equals the ten toes of clay and iron, completely married together. The beast slash Maitreya of Revelation 13.11 unites both horns into one. Revelation 13, 4. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This goes back once again to the video. Who is like the beast? Who can make war with the beast? The little horn is birthed out of the soaked in sin, four corners of the earth, slaughter altar, altar, and altar slash altar, that is fragmentation, judgments of God. The little horn rules over the three kings slash the three principalities of demons, mammon, war, prosperity, unto the life thereafter of the transcendency dedicated to Lucifer, apportioned by the Creator. The little horn has dominion through an Aztec warrior, etc., spirit, clothed with the full armor of Lucifer. The three principalities of God, or, or sorry, of gold, the three principalities of, of gold, frankincense and myrrh, have dominion throughout the seven ruling principalities that govern the world. Those three demonic principalities, unholy trinity of the earth, are Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Earthly kings are upheld by all levels of rank throughout the spiritual kingdom of Lucifer. The little horn is a Reich, and his higher horn came up last because the seat of the beast is in its last stage of development, manifestation in that era of time. The unveiling of spiritual and physical son of perdition is now imminent. So this unholy trinity of the earth that is of Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz once again is the, um, uh, the, the soul, spirit, and flesh of the unholy trinity of Lucifer, Satan, the devil manifested in humanity. In Daniel 8.3 Then I lifted up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and, and, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the other came up last. The higher horn is the horn of completion according to the stage that is the level of development. It is the three nations, also three kings, flesh, soul, and spirit of the fourth beast kingdoms 
of the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. The last four beast, the last fourth beast kingdom to rise up is the fourth Reich, Sodom and Egypt, where Jesus Christ was murdered. That kingdom is the completed marriage of the clay and the iron. That kingdom began to manifest in the Jubilee year of 2017. The final fourth beast kingdom is the complete vexation of souls, of them having been afflicted by the powers of darkness, and choosing to remain there throughout the entire world. Like him or not, the fourth Reich, eighth king administration, Little Horn, is the final and highest ranking birther that is a fire starter, Daniel 11, 36 to 38. Mandated to unify, and that's also found in Revelation 13, 1 to 4, mandated to unify all the inhabitants of the world to the spirit of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. See Jude 1, 4 to 6. Through reason of transgression against God, the entire world worships the first and second beast of Revelation 13, 2 to 4 and 11. The second beast receives the greatest worship of all. Lucifer is worshipped with loud chaos and shedding of blood, etc. The three kings, which are nations and principalities, are the first three horses of Revelation chapter 6. Flesh, soul, and spirit. Babylon is the head of gold. That is the fourth horse, the fourth dimension. Those four make up the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar. The three kings is humanity being conditioned from one era to another. Also equals new growth, new wine. Nehemiah 13, verse 5. Whether good or bad, gold and frankincense and myrrh and, and the seasonings thereof is the spirit of the trees of the Creator. Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 13 to 14. In Song of Solomon 4, 13 to 14, Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates, many seeds. Uh, God speaks regarding having a bell and a pomegranate. It is a, a minister of God with many seeds to sow. With pleasant fruits, camphire, with spikenard, spikenard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh, and alloys, with all the cheap spices. So trees of frankincense and myrrh and aloes, with all the cheap spices. Okay, so the chief spices is uh, vows being upheld by God and the people. Uh, the proverb says that when uh, a righteous man, when a man is righteous before God, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. In brackets here, we must discipline, exercise our senses in the real, true Jesus Christ. See Hebrews 5, 14. The three earthly kings equals gold, most precious. It is the standard and the most precious in, in, those, in those days, and the standard that God has set for humanity. So there's, uh, the three other kings is gold, frankincense, which is dedication and vows. Gold is the most precious. It is the um, prosperity. Frankincense is dedication and vows. Myrrh is odor of longevity. It is transcendency. Gold is the most precious and valuable, and it is the altar of incense. In Leviticus 2, 1 to 2 says, And when any will offer a, a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour. Okay, once again, a fine flour is the, um, is the, the, the powder of the many that are clothed in white, the holy dominion of God. And he shall pour oil upon it. And that is the Holy Spirit, and put frankincense thereon. This is the dedication. This is the vow. 
and he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, and he shall take there out his handful of the flour thereof, and of the oil thereof. You see, this is giving glory to God. We give glory to God. God takes the glory. Uh, you see the uh, that video, how God sends his glory throughout the earth in the playlist. And of the oil thereof, with all the frankincense thereof, and the priest shall burn the memorial of it upon the altar to be an offering made by fire to God of a sweet savor unto the Lord. And then the remnant of the meat shall be offered to Aaron and his sons. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He takes the glory. He takes the offering that we give him. He keeps for himself. Some he stores up uh, to give to God, the Father, that's found in Corinthians, and some of it he takes and keeps it as a treasure, as our treasure stored up in heaven. And that's how we reap throughout the entire world. We reap souls throughout the entire world, because now the information is in his Holy Spirit. In Leviticus 2, once again in 15.6, And thou shalt put oil upon it, and lay frankincense upon it uh, thereon. It is a meat offering and the priest shall burn the memorial part of it part of the beaten corn thereof also and part of the oil thereof with all the frankincense thereof it is an offering made by fire unto the Lord it's a fire offering it means that we're on fire for God dedication vow to God and we fulfill those vows and the Holy Spirit leads us into performing those vows executing those vows and uh, once again, the corn is, is, is in almost everything. It's a very widely used uh, produce uh, from the field. And offering made by fire to the Lord. In Leviticus 2, 1 to 2, and 15 to 16, frankincense is the showbread. Dedication, the vow, the offering of meat made by fire, a sweet savor, for acceptance. In 1 Chronicles 9.29 1 Chronicles 9.29 Some of them also were appointed to oversee the vessels. Vessels are people. So these are the, these are the principalities. Okay? They're appointed. Some of them are appointed to oversee the vessels and the instruments of the sanctuary and the fine flour, the wine, the oil, and the frankincense, and the seasoning the spices. The fine powder, flour, wine, oil, frankincense, and spices is the holy dominion of the covenant. Uh, fine flowers, there's many, dressed in white, and uh, within one soul, uh, through the principalities appointed to watch over the anointing. Even drunkenness of the Holy Spirit and fire of God burning within the priests and prophets. The spices, seasonings, equals individual anointings, growth, fruits, and helps thereof to glorify God. Frankincense equals dedication and vows. Song of Solomon 4.11 Song of Solomon 4.11, in this version, uh, in the RSV, I have some notes here. Your lips distill nectar, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The scent of your garments is like the scent of Lebanon. A garden locked is my sister, my bride. A garden locked, a fountain sealed. Okay, the, the, the fountain is a living water that comes out from humanity, from God to God. The lips, they declare vows, dedication to God. They declare the favorable year of the Lord. My bride, uh, honey and milk are under your tongue, used for speaking. And as the scripture says, when you make a vow, so the frankincense is dedication to God. And unto, unto making vows. And God leads us into those vows. In 
also this will this verse will come up a little bit later on in Leviticus 5:11 now in Leviticus 5:11 Leviticus 5:11 thy lips oh my spouse here's King Solomon's 4:11 that we just read the, the, the smell of thy garments is like the smell of the tabernacle okay so the garments also speaks regarding the armor of God in Leviticus 5:11 but if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons then he that sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of sin. So this is a, this is a real, this is, God is really convicting here. Okay? So he's saying, first of all, is that, that's also found in Numbers 5.15, frankincense is not required because they were not blessed with physical or spiritual wealth. The first covenant was based in the self-righteousness of also the physical creation. So it was, you know, who had the most money, who had the greatest house, who had the best sacrifice, who had the best grazing field, the, the, the social standing and all of that. That's what it was based on. And of course, that covenant got turned upside down because of it. Uh, however, if they're, in part of the, if they're part of the fine flower, which is the, which is the covenant, you see, uh, they need to practice, they need to... Uh, uh, practice, put all these things into practice. And uh, God saying, see, if he cannot afford, if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, well, he, they would have to buy these. Then he that sinned shall bring forth his offering, the tenth part of an ephah of the fine flour for a sin offering, which, which is the finger of God, the one tenth, which is the entire, which is all of them. And uh, he shall put no oil upon it, because he sinned. There's no Holy Spirit in the sins. Neither shall he put any frankincense thereon. Because you can't dedicate sin. You can't make your vows, you know, through, through sin. God does not accept that. In Song of Solomon 5, 1 to 5, Mark 15, 23, John 19, 39 to 42 equals myrrh. That is the aroma of preparation for the afterlife to God. Myrrh is the transcendency and it's also the candlestick. So gold is the prayer altar of incense, frankincense is the showbread, myrrh is the candlestick. And this makes up the holy trinity of the earth, uh, flesh, soul, and spirit of humanity. So the unholy trinity and the Holy Trinity and the unholy Trinity of the earth is spiritually throughout all the inhabitants. Uh, the unholy Trinity is for those that are of the world, all in various amounts. So uh, the, the the unholy Trinity, once again, it, it, the Holy Spirit showed me it has to do with also with Nimrod, Semiramis, the spirits, the spirit of Nimrod, the spirit of Semiramis, his wife, the spirit of Tammuz their child. It has to do with um, uh, the flesh, the soul, and the spirit. It would be the, uh, the flesh, spirit, and soul of humanity. And once again, it is the, exa it is the three kings. It is the uh, flesh, soul, and spirit um, of it, the three horses of Revelation. It's throughout the entire world. It is the same. It's just it's given different names. Okay? It's evolved. It's uh, you can say it's evolved or it's transformed. You know, it's um, uh, rather you can say that it has um, adapted. You know, to the times and changed its name, even its form. However, it remains. Uh, it comes from the. It stems from the exact same entity. It comes from the exact same place. In Song of Solomon, oh, this is amazing, um, chapter 5, in verse 3, I had put off my garment. So Jesus Christ here is speaking. I had put off my garment, that's his flesh. How could I put it on? He had not yet appeared in the flesh, as he did. I had bathed my feet, how should I soil them? And that's visitation, how shall I present myself? 
my beloved put his hand to the latch. And that is the door that is locked. It's a locked door. And my heart was thrilled within me because the door led to Christ, leads to Christ. I arose to open to my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, the fingers of God, upon the handles of the bolt, the lock. And that is the transcendency, the portal that opens in verse 6. I, oh, it is sad. It's lamentations. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. Very sad. Very sad. In Song of Solomon's 3, 6 to 10, frankincense is the showbread, the meat offering, vow, dedication and vow to God made through the Holy Spirit. And myrrh equals entering the afterlife, the thereafter, equals divine transcendency of a king, prophet and lord, a priest, uh, of uh, a king, prophet, and lord priest. The firstborn of such a one is the king of kings and the lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Song of Solomon, uh, Song of King Solomon in uh, chapter 3, 6 to 10 also uh, regards the little horn, false imitation of the true Messiah. And I have here in Genesis 2, 10 to 13, which is the four corners of the earth that was pierced by, of Babylon, of the fourth dimension of Lucifer. See, and, and so the product says, see Daniel 8, 8 to 13, etc. That's the product. Revelation 13, 1 to 4, and 11. And uh, Gog and Magog, and, and see Gog and Magog decoded reports. King, so son of King Solomon 3, 6 to 10, verse 1, who is it that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke? Out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke is the rising phoenix, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the powders of the merchant. Verse 6 is the rising of the phoenix through war, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all the powers of the merchant. It is the offering of fine flour, powders of the New World Order merchant city, gaining the entire world for Lucifer, but losing their souls. In verse 7, Behold his bed, which is Solomon's. Three score valiant men are about it, of the valiant of Israel. The bed is the office, is the, is the work one has been ordained to do. The work that they have uh, done in their lives, that they've been ordained to do with God. God told Solomon to build the temple. In Proverbs 20, 24, a man's steps are ordained by the Lord, but the answer, but uh, the, uh, how then can a man know his own way? And Psalms 90, 3 to 4, he bringeth a man to destruction, he maketh him lie down in the dust for a thousand years is but a watch in the night for the Lord. God ordains the steps of men either to eternal life or eternal condemnation, all in various degrees. In verse 8, they all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man hath his sword upon his thigh because of Fear in the night. This reminds me of Revelation chapter 19. The Lord comes back and he has a sword and he has a new name written on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he comes to take vengeance upon all of his foes and he is the one to do that and he does it through the sword of his mouth. So we're in a new covenant. We don't do physical war. We do, we, we do spiritual warfare. Every man has his sword upon his thigh. Because of fear in the night, the new name of the glorification is our sword. 
It is important to mention the warfare of the current standing covenant is spiritual, not physical. But Lucifer, Satan, the devil carried over the law of the first covenant of Moses, which included physical, natural selection. And that also included physical war. And so what, what Lucifer is doing, he's getting people to condition to accept murder. And this year started with that. And so this year is going to be, is, is, is really very possibly at the very final completion, as the Holy Spirit revealed to me in the studies, that Lucifer is getting all the people conditioned to accept murder. He does it through, through all kinds of bloodshed, sacrifices of children, abortions also or is a sacrifice of children, uh, war, shedding blood. And he's carried the law of the first covenant of Moses into this covenant age. Those are the, the toes and the feet that they leave a trail of blood wherever they go. Is the army of Joel, where the land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them, complete destruction. In verse 9, uh, and, and of course, it's because of the fear that is in the night. And so God says that anyone who shrinks back, my soul will, will abhor. He says to, to go. You know, the righteous are as bold as a lion. He says to go. And that, um, you know, God, God is with us. God is there. Uh, the fear of the night is also, you know, the fear that is in the daytime. It is the, the fear of the night is the darkness. Okay? And so... Uh, God, God says that uh, you know we're supposed to be bold. We're su we have the the anointing of Christ in us, as the Lord said. Fear not those who kill the flesh, and after that there's nothing they can do. But I'll tell you who to fear. You fear Him. You fear God, who kills both the flesh and the soul, both bodies, in hell, in the hell fire. That is, that is of Lucifer. For being of Lucifer. In verse 9, King Solomon made himself a chariot of the wood of Lebanon. Chariot of the wood of Lebanon. And that's where Elijah was carrying a fiery chariot into the heavenly realm. King Solomon made his bed. That is, that is the bed is our works. What is our works? Where do we sleep? Where will we sleep? King Solomon made his bed with the spirit of the temple God had him build. But the temples, the temple, temples of the little horn is separating, is, is, is separating people away from the Creator. The temples of the little horn do not have the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Creator. Their bed is of the works of Lucifer, Satan the devil. In verse 10, he made the pillars thereof of silver. The bottom that God says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. What kind of house will you build for me? For if I do not build the house, the laborers, they labor in vain. So this, these are the utensils within the cup, within the, the the tabernacle, that is within us. Once again, the gold, the frankincense, the gold is the altar of the prayer of incense offering. Is our prayer life? Incense is our dedicate or fra frankincense is our dedication uh, of um, you know uh, and our vows and and uh, the. Uh, being the showbread and the myrrh being the candlestick it's our transcendency the Holy Spirit dwelling within and the incense is the seasoning the spices he made the pillars thereof of silver the pillars the bottom thereof of gold the covering of it purple which is the, 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 uh, the color of royalty the midst thereof being paved with love 
the midst thereof, the spirit thereof, being paved with love. And that is, that is the heart. For the daughters of Jerusalem. The, the description of the temple, temples, uh, it's both, I have temple and temples, it's both uh, singular and plural, of God correspond to the true Messiah, the true Jesus Christ. Now I wanted to speak, I want to just end this with uh, Daniel 11 regarding the, the political bubble. What we're seeing in that video, the first video, uh, where this deal made with a China, the Holy Spirit has shown me these things in Daniel 11, 25 to 26. This is things that are happening in the spiritual realm. They're happening right now. Because what we, what we're seeing with our eyes is not is not in the physical world is not you know um, as as it seems. Okay, there are spiritual things happening that we do not perceive unless the Holy Spirit shows us. In Daniel eleven twenty-five 25 to 26, in verse 25, And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall wage war with an exceedingly great ar mighty army, but he shall not stand for plot shall be devised against him. The king of the north, he, he uh, prevails over the king of the south, that's North America, through strategies. He's, there, there are plots set against him, as speaks also in Obadiah. Uh, those that, he's speaking regarding Esau, those that have eaten your meat, uh, they have prevailed over you. Well, this is the exact same thing. Even those who eat his rich food shall be his undoing. His army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down. The army is the military also of the fourth dimension. And the reason being is because they're after the covenant. They want to destroy the covenant. It is symbolic of destroying God. So that's what the Holy Spirit put in my heart. We are, we are uh, at this point right now. So... Uh, the information is revealed according to the times. We must be ready. We must get ready. We must worship our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We must please the Father and be drawn to the Messiah, to the real Jesus Christ.